Welcome back to another Ground Up SCX24 build. And you guessed it, we're gonna be focusing on this CCXRC uh, Special Edition FuryTech Scythe chassis. So this is all aluminum with the uh, red aluminum motor cover, limited edition, only place to get it, CCXRC. So to go with this guy, since it was designed for the Komodo, I picked up this uh, fully built stellar transmission with the Komodo. So that'll be forward facing right under that motor mount as intended. And with that, I picked up a 15 tooth pinion to speed it up. I also picked up the FuryTech flat skid that goes with the Scythe chassis. And then I've got a Lizard Ultimate that is going to be powering this guy. And uh, got a Fly Sky mini receiver. Let's go over here to steering. I've got a couple of options here, but Either way I go, they're going to be great servos. Got a nice aluminum horn, aluminum uh, servo mount. I've got some MoFo CVDs and 30% overdrive to put in this brass front axle from CCXRC. I've got some tuning options as far as brass and aluminum steering links, plastic rear assembly, bearings for the front axle. Let's see, I've got some Samix goodies here in aluminum. I've got a captured rear uh, link riser and then I've got an actual adjustable rear link riser dependent on what I can fit what I want to use I've got some deadbolt and JLU uh, stainless links here these are nice and weighty I've used those before then I've got charisma oil filled shocks I've never used these before had them for a while figured this would be the build to use them on and then last but not least I've got kinetic wheels and kinetic millstone max and uh, I guess the overweights are the max the millstones are the inner ones but those are plus fives and then I've got uh, the new Enjora TPD tires 62 millimeter and then I think I'm gonna go ahead and keep these on here these are the uh, mudslingers so go for kind of the, the taller a little bit narrower tire because these aren't super narrow and then the final thing I discovered was uh, one-tenth scale hardware replaces this kind of out of scale kind of bulky hardware that these wheels have so I will be swapping that into the outer rings at least to get a nice scale look on the wheels so that is sweet so that's kind of the big overview so I think all that's left is to jump into the build okay quick run through before I get the axles uh, fully assembled or at least the front that needs to be assembled so I'm going to use these version 2 CVDs from MoFo and they've got the outer kind of retainer sleeve on there. I'm going to use this 30% overdrive in this uh, brass assembly from CCXRC with that hefty diff cover. Then I'm going to go ahead and start with the brass steering links because I'm using aluminum knuckles. Um, and then I'm also using an aluminum servo tray. This is an adjustable one. It's a straight knockoff of MoFo's best servo mount ever. Um, it's just offered in red and because of this build I wanted a little red accent but I would usually always go mofo then let's go to the rear axle got just the full axial assembly here so we're going to swap out the diff cover for this pretty sweet Samix red and uh, this link riser I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with just the typical stock link riser but double captured and then uh, this is an OG RC adjustable link riser so that is an option. I'm not sure about the rear um, battery tray, the link length. So I just, I don't know if there's gonna be interference there. So I'm gonna start with this one and just see if we can go from there. But anyways, um, gotta get some bearings in the front axle and uh, get that together. And then we'll see where we are. All right, these axles went together super smooth. Put a little grease in there no problems um, binding or anything got both o-rings in the front and back super smooth so you can see i've got some just some drive shafts stuck on here that's something i forgot to mention in the intro parts uh, so i've got a short medium drive shaft set here planning to do the jeep front end and the deadbolt rear on this so uh, i just toss these on here to test make sure everything was smooth so the axles, I think, we'll put aside for now. Those are done. And then I've got the uh, actual frame chassis out here to take a look at. 
So it comes this way already kind of built. So it's got the long tray, which is set up for the Komodo forward facing mount, but it also comes with uh, a couple short ones. You can do one up front and then a shorter battery tray if you're gonna run a micro Komodo. Um, so a little different setup here, but we're not gonna use these. And then of course it comes with some shock uh, micro nuts to back up the shock mounts. Um, so we'll use those. But that's the basic uh, frame, so you don't get any transmission skid. So that is the piece that I ordered separate. So this is their flat LCG aluminum skid plate that's made for this. So let's get this guy out. So that is nice. Nice engraving on the bottom, nice and flat. So that's going to be our skid for this guy. And then they've done all the work for me here. Everything is built. So this is the transmission, motor, and motor mount all together. So we are in fact going to disassemble this. Um, I believe this is all metal gear. Um, the reason I want to disassemble, I'm gonna swap this pinion. So this I believe comes with the 12 tooth pinion we are going to swap up to this 15T. So this will give us a little more speed. Um, I've used this before, so it's a nice little upgrade. So we'll swap that on there. And then uh, I guess these are just spare, looks like these are just spare motor mount screws that it comes with because it's already set up. So I don't think we'll need those. And then uh, the final little bit here is going to be Oh yeah, these guys came with the skid, I believe. I've got my two link sets here, so I'm going to dig out the deadbolt rear and the Jeep front, assemble those guys, and we will have enough probably to get the axles hung minus the shocks. So I'm going to get to it. Well, back with my first little hiccup. So it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to use this Fury Tech flat skid. Um, I was sitting there trying to fit this in the frame and it kept wanting to sit a little crooked and I finally realized that it's because the motor was hitting the motor cover. So I got out a stock skid and uh, compared the two holes, you know, and then the third to this guy and they've shifted it over. So when you try to mount this, the motor no longer sits perfectly center of that chassis. It's off center sitting on this, so it no longer works with this guy. So that's something to know. This flat skid um, is not gonna work with the Komodo forward facing. It might work with the micro, you know, facing forward or backwards with that other setup. But for this one, kind of a bummer, it throws it just enough off center that it won't fit in there. So. I've got a plastic one, so I'm going to swap to that and keep on moving. Okay, I've got it switched to this stock transmission plate and still problematic. So I don't know what the deal is. If this frame is tweaked, I'm not sure, but it's definitely not sitting in the center and it's basically touching this edge. So. I'm not sure. Um, I think I'm going to pull the frame apart and see if I can maybe reassemble it and get it more square. I, I don't know, but something is obviously not right because this whole frame is designed for their forward mount Komodo and that's what that is. So um, yeah, I'm just going to pull this whole frame apart and maybe assemble it around the transmission. I, I don't know, but something is uh, wonky. This, I mean, it looks square, so I, I don't know. I'm not sure what the deal is, but hopefully this thing is going to work out. Okay, after pulling this frame apart and putting it back together, nothing was wrong with it or out of square. So I did some extensive searching online, and the only other Scythe build V2 that I found was a carbon V2 with a forward Komodo, and they had mounted this cover plate up front like this. So I'm assuming they ran into the same exact issue, but you can see how tight it is there. 
and how off center that motor is. So there's just no way to fit that brace. Um, it's pretty bulky right there and then either way the top edge is going to hit. Um, so I went ahead and reinstalled it with this flat skid because this is made for the V2 uh, scythe only or the grasshopper. So I'm going to use this with this chassis. So <clears throat> this looks kind of silly to me plus it doesn't protect the motor. That's the whole point of it. So I'm not going to run it like this. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is get rid of the Komodo motor and the motor mount and switch over to this BAM from MoFo RC. So this is the, I believe the 1900 KV. So this is the slower one with an 18 tooth pinion. And then I've got the new aluminum forward facing mount. So this is fairly heavy. So it'll be a good match uh, as far as weight for a swap for this guy. But you can see the size is so much smaller. So my hope is it will tuck under this mount just fine once I get it back in the normal position. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch that out, I think. And then one other note is you can see I'm missing a screw here. Um, two, two of these were really hard to get out. I had to heat them up to get them out. And then one of them wouldn't go back in at all. So I used just a normal hex uh, piece of hardware just to try to work it in and out and uh, sheared off on me. So half of the bolt is in there. So there's no way of getting that out except ordering a new roof. So anyways, be careful with these tiny little flatheads if you take these apart. But anyways, I'm going to switch out and get that BAM uh, moved over. Okay, BAM was successfully installed. Seems to fit pretty nicely in there. Clears that motor mount or motor cover, no problem. I did have to switch in a steel uh, spur gear that was not a Mod 5. That, that's what comes with the Fury Tech. So I've got just a typical 18 tooth pinion on here. So I needed that normal spur gear. So luckily I had one on hand. The only thing I'm not super happy with is the wires. Um, they're pretty stiff right here coming out of the motor and there's a little notch in the motor mount right there so that's where I would like to get them down but I was just having a hard time getting that motor rotated to mount correctly there are three mounts I've only got two screws in but there's three slots so I may uh, see if I can finagle that down there a little bit further it didn't seem to want to come out over here because the mount is a lot thicker and that is kind of angled back. Um, so anyways, I definitely don't want to like break those wires or anything. So I just don't like them sticking out of the side kind of unprotected there. But as far as the motor, I think that's probably the direction here. Um, so I think I'm going to pull this whole transmission back out, see if I can clock that motor any better. And then uh, I think I'm going to get out the electronics, go ahead and bind it and test this motor, make sure everything is kosher. And then uh, we've got links and shocks and axles and tires. So I think this thing is finally going to start moving forward after this little bit of a motor slowdown. But it's looking good. Mofo to the rescue. All right, got the electronics out. I have hooked it up and tested it and made a discovery. So let me turn this on and I will show you the discovery. So the first discovery was once I plugged this up to the Ultimate, um, it worked fine. And then I updated the firmware to 1.7, which is the latest as of now. And I was getting jumping at full throttle. And of course, I'm not now at full throttle. I rolled it back to just the starting point firmware and it's fine. It's on micro Komodo setting. Boy, that's loud on the table. So the next thing I discovered was, uh, wow, that's turning really fast. And of course it is on 3S, so it's gonna be faster, but I decided to uh, 
double check with Nick at Mofo RC, and uh, I had the wrong BAM in. So you can see these wires here, they're small and there's a lot of them. So this is actually the 1900 KV. This BAM <clears throat> has fewer wire wraps and they're a lot larger uh, diameter. I don't know if we'll be able to see that here, but there's fewer of them and they're a lot larger copper wires. So this is the 4300. So I've got the really fast one in right now. So I'm gonna take this out, swap that in, and hopefully we won't be uh, smoking tires with uh, this BAM installed. So I'm gonna re-swap that out and uh, remesh it. But you can see here, I was able to clock the motor to get these wires um, from sticking out of the frame body. I couldn't get them to rotate down here. They're just, it wasn't aligning with the holes. That would have been nice. That's a nice little notch, but uh, this is gonna work fine out of the way and uh, they can come right back like this under the roof. So that all works out. So next thing I'm gonna do, switch the BAM and then we'll move forward. Here's a quick shot of those two BAMs. You can see the, the one on the left has the smaller wraps and more of them the one on the right has fewer wraps and they're larger. So the larger wraps, fewer of them, less resistance, it's gonna be faster, that makes sense. Smaller wires, more of them, more resistance, gonna be slower. So we're gonna be putting in the one on the left now. So this one is actually the 1900. The other one is the 4100, so good to know. Okay, here we are with the correct BAM motor installed. And let's see this top speed. Much better. And that feels like that's the 1900. So, all right, good deal. Well, this looks like progress. So I've got the Enjoy Links uh, assembled. And man, those went together super easy without any O-rings. You just snap in the uh, little ball joint into the eyelet. And uh, one, one side of the rod end has an eyelet that's a little bit larger. So that's the, that's the one you want to snap it into. So just pay attention to that. And these go together super easy. The printing is on opposite sides for the high clearance. And man, I think the little red uh, accent is going to look great with this build. And these things have some nice heft to them. These are probably approaching the weight of brass links. They're pretty weighty, they're solid stainless. But uh, I think that's gonna take care of the links. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out was one set, the Jeep set, came with uh, a threaded brass spacer. So that's cool, they're including that to four link the front. So if you don't have a servo tray that's threaded on both sides, you can put that brass sleeve right in the middle and thread into that. So the deadbolt did not come with that, but they one had a blue placard, one had a red, maybe one of them was an old package. So I'm, I'm assuming they're starting to include this in the new Lynx shipping. So that's pretty nice. So really the only thing left to assemble is gonna be these Charisma shocks. And when they say some assembly required, they're not lying. So down to every little O-ring so as most people know, the hardware for these Charisma shocks is larger than SCX24 hardware. And the V1 Scythe chassis was actually designed with those holes in mind. So it was set up for the Charisma shocks. I don't think a lot of people liked that. So they went back to small holes and they added a lot more mounting options. They also added link riser positions. So that's also nice. So another reason I wanted to use this nice Fury Tech flat skid because it does not have any upper link mounts built in. It's set up for this V2 chassis. So a few little tweaks on the V2 scythe, but uh, I think I'm just going to build these shocks per instructions and uh, potentially see about modifying, like making a sleeve or something to use uh, around the SCX24 size hardware to make it work rather than swapping shock ends um, or building some kind of hybrid shock. But uh, I'll get them assembled. I wanna just see how they operate in their stock form um, and then we'll go from there. Okay, got these shocks assembled. 
and uh, went together no problems got some 30 weight oil in them nothing to write home about I would probably go with the hot racing long travel oil filled at this point in time I believe these are about 43 eye to eye and about 32 eye to eye compressed so similar um, I want to say the hot racing could even compress smaller and those are about 42 43 millimeter as well so just using these because I had them they're a little bit of a struggle because of the hardware and as you can see I put on some layers of uh, heat shrink to kind of get it up to this inner diameter of the ball and then I had to slip on these are the only little uh, washers I had so those are right before the you know right after the head before the shrink to hold on these uh, ball ends or to keep the shock from falling off so test fitting it, it seemed to work but we'll see um, once we get it all assembled how smooth that goes but I think for now we're going to look at the final piece of uh, decision making here I guess the servo choices so before we get to that one thing I was looking at with this front end before uh, kind of test fitting one of the servos was at full throw with these CVDs the uh, steering link was coming in contact with this really thick diff cover. So you can see I've put in some aluminum spacers. These are hot racing, little aluminum spacers, maybe two mil. But that brought this uh, steering link up just enough. So at full throw, you can see that little gap there. It's not touching. It's right above the little chamfered edge of this protrusion of the diff. So that got that all working so I can get to my full usage of those CVD axles. So that's ready for the servos. So now I've got them both out here and they're both gorgeous. <clears throat> so this is really going to be on looks alone. Um, and I could really go either way. But this one is so pretty and well designed that it really deserves to be on a chassis build to be seen at all times. So I'm leaning towards that shift servo. So looking at these specs, this thing is just unreal. It's going to be way too much for this build as far as weight. So I'll be running at 8.4 volts, so that's 151 ounce inches. But if you had no BEC, 115 ounce inches at 6 volts. That's insane. So just super strong. And let's look at this Reef's Mighty Chihuahua. So at 8.4, 104 versus 150. And at 6, it's 80 versus 115. So still super powerful. But this guy is just insanity. So I think I'm going to start with the shift servo just to put it on display. And uh, I'll save this guy for maybe a build that has a body on it. Um, maybe another chassis. We'll see. You can always swap some servos around. Another thing I like about this is the all black cable versus the stripes. So again, since this is going to be all visible, I'd rather have the black wire in. So I think that's going to push this way. The uh, <coughs> NSD RC servo horn fits fine. The NSD RC um, hardware does not work with the shift. You're going to have to use its own screw that came with its own plastic horn. So I'm going to get that prepped and ready. And then I think we are just looking at uh, basic assembly and then we'll get to wheels and tires. All right. Quick note here before we jump into final assembly. On these drive shafts, I did mention this earlier, um, the short medium set uh, does not give you everything you need to complete a build like this. So when they say short medium, they're referring to the male short and the male medium. But uh, for the females, you're gonna get the deadbolt front that you see there, the Jeep rear, which you see there, and you get the deadbolt rear. So you're gonna need a Jeep front on hand for this uh, female. So if you don't have that, I believe that is in the Gladiator extra long set. Um, have to confirm that, but of course I've got plenty of drive shafts on hand, so I've got one of those. Another thing you're gonna need, and I never really mentioned this, but hardware. So you see here I've got bags sorted by size, O-rings, color, head style, a um, bunch of washers. So all of that stuff kind of makes these builds go pretty smoothly. Um, and I mention that because this scythe kit comes with seven micro nuts. So you've got four of your shocks to back those up on the frame. 
but if you're going to use their link riser positions on the frame, you need four more for those links. So luckily I've got, of course, some micro nuts here, but just a good thing to always have uh, hardware that you think you're going to need on hand. And if you do a lot of builds, you probably do have exactly what I've got here, just tons of stuff to pull from, but that makes these go much easier. So with that said, I think we're going to turn this into a vehicle here. Already into the nitty gritty here, getting a fitment issue. So this Fury Tech flat skid and these Enjora uh, ball joints do not uh, work together. So you can see here, it is not fitting. So this is another good reason to always have a Dremel on hand. So I'm gonna see if I can take a little off each edge and make these work. Uh, if not, maybe uh, a stock plastic uh, ball joints will pop in there, but I bet I can make these work. So just FYI, another little uh, thing to look out with. Oh, and I will say these are going to require Loctite going back in. There's so little bite and just a, barely a turn and they're loose and you know, a couple of screw turns and they're out. So FYI. Okay, back with these links modified. So the Dremel made short work of that. So I just kind of held a, a finger to one side and just zip, zip, a little bit of sanding there, and that was enough. And then I had to take the uh, sanding wheel kind of a little around the head of the plastic as well, because when I test fit these, that was kind of hanging up. Um, so I've got one mounted up now on the rear. So I've got nice free movement in all direction there. So just a few, uh, few little quirks about this flat uh, skid plate, but anyways, that I think that'll take care of the links. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those on and see if we can't get anything else on. We have ourselves a chassis. So links are on, no binding with that little bit of uh, clearancing there. You see I've got the servo installed and that just looks awesome sitting up there on that red tray. A little bit of accent on the front, a little bit on the rear. And I'm really digging <laughs> having to go to the BAM motor and the black mount. So just a little bit of accent of red there and there. I think this is uh, working out nicely. Uh, the shocks feel really good. Um, mounted up just fine. Back those up with little micro nuts and some uh, thread locker. And uh, my little small washers are doing what they need to to retain it. So I've got the mounts flipped, so they've got the kind of the washer, so the mounts retain the shock, and then the washer just keeps the mount from slipping off. So all that is working well. These have a nice amount of play. Um, took me a few tries to get the shocks on the frame where I wanted them, but on the front, ended up getting them perfect. So you can see here on full compression, they stop right before the uh, link comes in contact with this motor so it can still spin just fine so no no binding no collision plenty of space up here with this frame kind of the snub nose of that so that's really nice um, the rear i'm almost there it's going to take a little more adjusting i think i'm still bottoming out uh, at the tray which i don't want so <clears throat> you can see a little bit of piston there still left so it seemed like when i moved the shock mount back one it was stopping me too far down so i may see about an upper one but i'm going to play with that a little more but i think for now i'm happy enough with it that it's time to move on to the challenge phase of uh taking all of this stuff well not the battery and stuffing it in here so I've got kind of a good idea of what, what I'm going to do here, but I guess before I, before I jump into that, I'll just run through. <clears throat> We've got the Lizard Ultimate here. It comes with this uh, whip here to go to the receiver. And then I've got this micro four channel for the FlySky GT5. Um, and then for running this 3S battery, I'm going to use this little jumper. So that'll plug the battery into the Ultimate. And then I've got this from an older Fury Tech uh, Lizard, I believe, so it's just a shorty. So I'm going to swap that in since these will be basically on top of each other under there. Um, and then this little guy here is a custom styrene mount from uh, Rockwolf Designs. So he sent me a few of these 
they've got little slots here and they just clip up and uh, kind of hold this receiver just like that um, so you can plug and unplug but it'll it'll double side down and keep it mounted so that's awesome usually I'm just putting double side on that servo plug and sticking that down so this will basically do the same thing but allow you to plug and unplug everything so I'm gonna see if I can work that in I'm not sure but uh, anyways that's kind of the the components going in so I think I'm gonna unscrew this roof and uh, jump into this all right got the electronic shoehorned in there and man they worked out really well as you can see here I ended up sitting that lizard ultimate vertically and I wanted to orient the power button where I could get to it so that put all the plugs facing forward into kind of that transmission dead space so that worked out really well Um, the motor wires, I just kind of looped them um, and twisted them opposite the motor so it just keeps tension away from that motor. There's no issue uh, with those coming into contact with anything. The servo wire, I've got uh, right now, I've got rubber banded to keep it taut and kind of train it right here. And then it's running along the bottom of the frame there and it just... Uh, comes up and plugs right into the receiver here. So that receiver is double-sided down to the tray and so is the ultimate. So you can see that white double side under the receiver and there's the bottom of the ultimate. But that just barely misses the roof, getting all that tucked in. And then I've got the battery compressed kind of as far as I can with the cords right here. And then the power cord since there was no room in the roof to really bring it out the top, I uh, snaked it under and I'm coming up the uh, battery tray slot here. So that kind of goes under and up. So that's nice. Um, and then all of this can kind of fold down in there and keep it clean. Um, and then for this shock, like I was saying earlier, I was hitting that tray. So if I moved it back one, it stopped it short. But stopping it short may work out perfect now with that bulk of the Velcro. So now it's, it's hitting the Velcro and you can see there's some piston left. So I could leave it as is. It's got a soft bump stop now at least. Or I could move it back and keep it maybe from hitting that. But overall, super happy with how clean that worked out. Um, I've seen a lot of scythe builds that are not super clean as far as the battery and the wiring um, so anyways i think i'm pretty happy with this i think let's turn it on i've already plugged it in and tested it one thing i had to do if you'll notice here there's a little little gap here between so when i was pushing this battery in i actually compressed this and i was pushing the bind button that's on the back side so it would go into quick flashlight like a bind mode so I wasn't getting any response. So if I just pulled this back, it would release that bind button. So what I did is took a piece of double-sided tape, put it on the back of the lizard just as a little buffer. So this can't compress any further, just as a spacer basically. So it keeps me from pushing this battery too hard and putting that into bind mode. So let's uh, turn on this transmitter here. So I've already adjusted my servo endpoints. Um, super fast, super smooth. The CVDs, no bucking, no binding. Got them at full throw. So that's the first thing you want to do with these high-powered servos is adjust your dual rate and endpoints. So I usually plug them in, you know, get it centered, put on the servo horn, and then I turn the dual rate down to maybe 70% on this, so it's not at full throw. And then I kind of creep it up, uh, looking at basically if it's hitting the diff, and I'm also looking at the edge here and listening for any bind. So then I can turn that dual rate up until one side is basically maxed, and then they're usually uneven. So then the other side, you've got to adjust with the endpoint adjustment. So 
let's say your dual rates maxed you out on this side and you're not on this side, then you just turn that endpoint up for this side to max it. So then you're maxed now at both left and right uh, positions. So you can't throw this thing too hard. You can't put any strain on the axles. You're not putting any strain on the mount. Um, nothing is wanting to twist here at full throw. And that's really a big deal with these powerful servos because they can just snap components in, you know, one wrong turn. If you don't have it adjusted, you can snap an axle, break something off a mount. Uh, super easy to do. So always get your servos adjusted first before you really put wheels on, do anything. Just make sure that is all good. But now that we are, we're all tested here. I think it's time to look at wheels and tires. Here we are at last. My favorite point of any build, the wheels and tires. So you can see I've got it all broken down here. I wanted to switch out some tires and some foams, so I figured this would be a good time to kind of go through it. Um, so for the wheels, I'm going to be using some old school wheels, and by that I mean these came out uh, really early, early, maybe two years ago. Um, probably the first kind of small manufacturer custom wheels. So these are kinetic uh, buckshot wheels and they come in three styles. So this is the vertical that has that vertical edge and just deep dish face. And then these are the gravy bowl. So they've got just the full bowl. And there's one more called the accent. So it's like the gravy bowl, but then it has a flat bottom. So there's a little line at the bottom, a little accent line. So really similar to the gravy bowl. So these come vented, they're all aluminum, one piece center, no ring. You've just got the two beadlock rings and then so you can see the bead kind of seat is built in there. So just super nice, um, no hardware on the inside at the back. These are about a zero offset. Um, so with that open backside, Kinetic also came out with <coughs> these hex weight extensions. So these are millstones and millstone maxes. And these have since been knocked off. So these are widely available on the market, but he was the first to come out with these. So the millstone is actually this guy, which is the plus five hex weight extension. And then the max is the overweight. So this slips on first, then you slide in the pin and then this seats over. And then you've got to use one of these sleeve nuts, um, just like any of these plus five hex extensions. So you can see here, I've already test fit the front and I had to shave off some of that back spacing to get it to seat far enough to get the pin to slide through. Um, Cause you've got to put that on first. So for some reason, these CVDs, that pin hole was just barely not out far enough. So. Haven't tested the back, but I'm guessing it'll work because I've used these before. The rear is just a stock axle, so should be no issue. So that's gonna provide a little bit of weight and those uh, overweights are nice because you can choose not to use those. So you can tune your front end a little heavier, which is probably what I'm gonna do on this. Uh, we'll see when we get it on the scales. So then uh, for tires, I'm also going fairly old school over here. These are kind of the original Kings the uh, mudslingers. So these ruled forever until uh, other big tire options came on the market. So for the new school, I've got the 62 millimeter Enjoy tires. So these are you know, all terrain crawler tires, but basically these are the TPD tread pattern. And I'll uh, compare that and show what I'm talking about here in a minute. And uh, just for foams here, I think for these slingers, they've got fairly stiff uh, foams, which I was running in a heavier rig, but since this is lighter, um, these are very soft, but uh, the tread actually provides quite a bit of stiffness. So I'm going to switch in these full color innovations foams. So I've got soft and then mediums. So I pulled those out of some other tires. So this is what a, a full foam new looks like that's not compressed, but uh, that ought to give those a nice feel. And I usually just kind of put something heavy on those and see how hard I have to press to kind of compress it down, which quite a bit on those. 
and these Injura 62s have a really nice foam. So that foam just collapses. So those feel really good. So I'm going to run these foams in the Injuras. So I think now I'm going to mount these up. And uh, well, one thing I forgot to mention, a little baggy here. So this is one tenth scale hardware. So the one thing that I really didn't like about these wheels was kind of the cap head size of those screws. Um, it's nice because those use the typical uh, 050 driver tip, even though they're a larger hardware size, but just the size of that screw head is just not very scale. So these, although bigger than 124 scale hardware, they still look uh, nicer uh, just being the scale hex. So I'm going to swap those in on the outer face, have some good looking uh, wheels and tires here. So I'm going to get these mounted up, get those hex weights on there, and then we'll see what this guy looks like. Okay, a little mounting progress. So I've got three of each mounted up and uh, they look killer. Really digging those. So before I get the uh, fourth one mounted up, I figured I'd do a little comparison here. So just compound wise of the two I'm going to use. So RC four wheel drive, these both took the foams out of them. But uh, of course, the RC four wheel drive is just super sticky. So the Injura is sticky, it's soft, but this is the RC four wheel drive stickiness. So uh, we'll just set that lump of rubber down. So this, this is sticky, but it does uh, kind of pop back. So these other two, earlier I called this a TPD, and the reason why is it's modeled after uh, this boom racing. TPD, so this is smaller, like a 59, I believe. Everything is kind of scaled down on this guy, but uh, basically the same tread pattern. And then in the same size, 62, is this DJ Crawler. It's the same pattern, a um, little different on the sidewall. It doesn't go in towards the rim as far as this. Uh, in Jora, there's a lot more blank sidewall than there is here. This in Jora is also a deeper lug, just all the way around sidewall and tire. Not that these are not deep, but this is even chunkier. So a few little differences there, but uh, really, really liking this style, this TPD style with the big chunky sidewall. That's kind of my new favorite. Um, Let's see if this guy's ever going to get back to looking like a tire. All right, so there it's kind of coming back to life. But super, super sticky and uh, gummy. This is gummy as well, sticky, but not near as sticky. This has the kind of ribbed inner sidewall, so it feels like a thicker rubber overall. This definitely feels fairly floppy, but I think all in all, these will be two pretty good ones to run on this rig. So you can see I've got the scales out here. They're probably going to time out. So I'm just going to turn them off, turn them back on, zero them out. So I figured I'd just weigh up one of these wheels kind of on its own. So let's get all the hardware and rings on there. Fairly lightweight, so these are about like a, a little heavier than a typical aluminum wheel once you get all that hardware in there, 14 grams. I think a lot of the aluminum ring, full aluminum build wheels, like the Trials, are maybe 11 grams. So a few grams heavier, but the real thing I want to do is just check this, uh, both of these guys. So that's the Millstone and that's the Overweight. So we're going to be putting 6.3 all the way around and then the option to add an additional 7. So that is good to know. So I think I'm going to get this last tire mounted up on each of these and uh, get everything on the vehicle. Okay, got all four wheels on it now. Thing is looking awesome. So I went with the Mudslingers first 
the old school theme with the gravy bowls and those feel great. So they're vented and they've got those full Crawl Innovations foams. Man, just super sticky. Really happy with these shocks. Just gonna be a flex machine, I think. So let's check that, speaking of. So that's four. Those are those massive tires. I mean, that is just insane right there. So that is probably five plus stock tires right there. So that is awesome. So looking at this thing, it does kind of sit a little high, fully kind of sprung. Well, I guess it sits down a little bit. The battery will probably drop it some, but uh, I'm wondering if I can use some rubber bands to potentially bring this down, maybe get it riding somewhere in this zone, a little bit, uh, a little bit lower, keep the nose tucked. So I do have some uh, rubber bands, so I think I'm going to look at probably just shock, you know, shock point mounting those behind uh, the shocks there because I don't really have a good center point to go to on this frame, um, and I think that'll just keep them kind of hidden. But uh, I think I'm going to throw those on there and just see if that does anything uh, negatively to the articulation because I, I want to keep all of that for sure. I just want to see if I can get the overall uh, body down a little bit. Man, that's going to look mean. So let me, uh, let me see if I can get some rubber bands on here and then we'll take another look at it. All right, look at that. Got those rubber bands installed and that is sitting super low. That is awesome. Nice low stance right there. Those front links are even tucked up a little more than horizontal. So that's probably about horizontal right there. So that is sweet. So the big question is, did that hurt articulation at all? But let's see, let's get these tires out. Nope, doesn't look like it did at all. And you can see there I swapped wheel tires on you. So these are the Enduros, and those look awesome as well. Just killer. So I think now that we've got kind of a little bit of uh, shock tuning done, got all the wheels on, electronics in, I think it's time for the weigh-in and uh, see where we ended up on this build. All right, moment of truth. Got these scales zeroed out. So let's see what this chassis weighs without the battery. Let it settle in. So it looks like we're gonna settle in about 397 grams with a nice front ratio of 62. So that's, that's really nice because we're gonna put a battery in the rear and that battery is really heavy. So I'm predicting that battery is probably gonna drop it back at least 3% um, to maybe 59, 41. Um, that's my prediction, but we'll see. I'm gonna flip over here to ounces real quick. So 14 ounces. So not uh, super heavy, but definitely not super light. Um, still under that 400 mark for the chassis alone. So I'm gonna get a battery in this and then we'll see what that did. Batteries in, place your bets. Let's see where we ended up. Wow, so even more than uh, 3%, that jumped us back 5% to 5743, and it pushed us up to, what, 440? We were at 397 grams. So let's flip over to ounces. So from 14, we jumped up to 15.5. So we can... Settle that out to a 50-50 side to side, yes. All right, that makes me a little bit happier. So 439, 440 grams overall with the 5743. So I think if I'm gonna run this uh, big heavy battery back here, 
I think this is telling me that I need to swap to some brass knuckles on the front and take off those aluminum ones and that may get me exactly where I want to be. So I think now that the battery's in, uh, might as well turn this guy on and do a little testing. Well, here we are, got the uh, tires taped and as I was getting out my tape, I decided to uh, take care of that bright yellow and blue battery with this trusty uh, black tape here so that looks much cleaner i trimmed down the uh, velcro strap a little just trying to clean that up and make it disappear as much as possible but i think it looks pretty good so i've got these tires taped so i've got 30 percent overdrive in the front from mofo rc i haven't used that yet i think i've used a 23 percent and i want to say the 23 percent was like five and maybe a quarter rotations before it came back to even so this should be more than that so let's give it a uh, let's give it a turn here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like eight. We just we'll call that eight. Pretty close to eight rotations. So. That is a massive amount of overdrive there. Just insane. So that combined with the CBDs, I guess that speed at 8.4. Some just great turning. Look at that thing. This bam can just creep. top speed. Let's get this tape off the tires. It's no good. Boy, that's got some pep on 3S for this 1900. I cannot imagine that 4100 on 3S with uh, actually tires on it. That would be pretty insane. So, it looks like... Uh, Everything is functioning smoothly here. Overdrive is working. So that is great. Man, that servo is just insane. Cannot wait to actually get this out and run it. All right. Well, here we are. It's the end of another SCX24 build. And I gotta say, I am super happy with this one. Just an awesome, awesome little chassis. When these first came on the market, I didn't really know what I thought about them design-wise uh, as far as the Scythe chassis. And then uh, just over time, they kind of have grown on me. And then with these V2 uh, adjustments here on these new chassis, that really kind of sealed the deal for me as far as wanting to pick one of these up. So really happy that I did. Um, and I think overall the build went fairly smooth. The, the major hiccup was probably the weirdness of not being able to fit the forward-facing FuryTech Komodo motor under that motor cover. So I don't know what the deal was there. I don't know if they made a design tweak from the V1 to the V2. I know the motor cover is different on these V2s, but uh, having to swap to this MoFo RC BAM uh, 1900 kV motor was not a bad uh, solution at all. In fact, I am probably happier with this motor in here than I would have been with that giant Komodo. Um, nice blacked out look, so it goes with the theme very well still. Um, probably dropped the center of gravity a little because it's not as large of a motor and it's not sitting as high. So I think that worked out really well. Um, the other well, item I didn't use was this uh, OG RC link riser here and uh, you know when you use these you just always have to have that clearance above at uh, full compression so you have to be cognizant of that and that's the reason I didn't end up using it so I did pull these shocks back one position to go ahead and stop the up travel short of slamming into the battery tray so 
basically that diff comes right up to the bottom of that battery strap. It's all black under there, so it's kind of hard to see. But uh, that's really the reason that I didn't have that space uh, to use that link riser. But in the end, I don't think it matters because again, this V2 chassis has link riser options built in. So I've already taken advantage of those. And you can see I've gotten my links uh, parallel, kind of front and back, those upper and lowers. So that's kind of what you're shooting for. So that's super nice. Um, and that worked out really well with the you know, Fury Tech flat skid for this chassis. So that all goes together super nice. Um, the shocks worked out well. Just a super easy mod, a washer, and just a few wraps of uh, heat shrink to uh, make that hardware a little bigger diameter, but no problem there. And of course, <clears throat> the work of art here on the front, this shift RC servo, just awesome. Could not be happier with that. It just looks like it got graffitied up. Just super cool. Um, and then all the CC XRC parts, the brass front axle, and of course the limited chassis. So I believe this is the only version of the chassis that has the red motor cover and the black roof, black aluminum. <clears throat> only place you can get it is from CC XRC. So super awesome there. So, anyways, <clears throat> as always, thanks for coming along on this uh, build journey with me. I know it was a long one, sometimes that's how they go, but uh, I hope you learned something along the way. I know I did, for sure, this time. Um, but anyways, until next time, thanks for watching.